I'm going to briefly just reflect on the differences between risk of um, um, risk of risk of Rob two risk of bias Rob two tool versus the 2011 Cochrane Rob tool. So 2011 tool included sequence generation and allocation concealment as separate domains. Uh, but, uh, and they were both under uh, the heading of selection bias. Now this um, selection bias and all these labels, selection, detect and bias, they've all been scrapped. Uh, as we felt they, they, in some cases they weren't appropriate um, and in some cases they weren't helpful. In this case, selection bio, bias wasn't an appropriate term uh, to use. And this is because this term is widely used to mean different things to different people. So to many, selection bias uh, suggests the choice of participants for a study um, or whether they were representative of the population. And that is not an issue of bias, it's an issue of applicability or indirectness. And therefore that sort of um, thing is addressed in, in grade. Uh, and um, more, more appropriately uh, in uh, modern epidemiology, selection bias means something very specific and it's not quite the same at issues um, uh, with the allocation. Um, for any of you who might be familiar with Robin's eye tool, this randomization domain in Rob2 actually covers issues of both confounding and selection of participants into the study in the Robin's eye tool. So those two domains in Robin's eye map onto the um, randomization domain in Rob2. If knowledge of the next assignment leads to participants being withheld from entering the trial, then that leads to selection bias. But if it leads only to participants being allocated to either their preferred intervention arm, intervention arm or their doctor's preferred intervention arm, then that introduces confounding, as Alex mentioned in, on, on her first slide explaining the theoretical underpinnings. So there are two ways in which problem with the randomization can lead to bias, bias allocation to comparison groups and bias enrollment in it to the study. So that's why we dropped the selection bias terms. It's, it's just confusing and it means different things to different people. Failure to implement either of these. Pro so the reason why we then um, put uh, sequence generation and allocation concealment into under the one uh, domain is because failure to implement either process uh, properly uh, creates um, opportunities for either the enrollment into the study or the allocation of our all participants into the groups to be influenced by prognostic factors. And I hope that that's clear. Uh, it ends up in, in, in both cases, we get unbalanced or biased distribution of patients between groups. And that's why it made sense to combine this into one single domain. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so, in addition, in addition to these two familiar uh, domains, because I saw 80% we have used Rob, uh, so you'll be pretty much fully familiar with allocation, uh, concealment, and, and, and sequence generation. So, we have an, another signaling question, and that is about baseline imbalances. Uh, why was this added? Uh, partly because one of the most frequently added other bias items in the original ROB tools, so because we had this option for other bias. Um, the, this was added quite a lot and most case, in most cases it was kind of inappropriate, uh, over-interpretation of baseline imbalance, uh, where it really wasn't biased and it shouldn't have been there. Uh, so th there was a, a strong drive that if people are going to be using this, then we need to um, set some um, set some guidelines of, of of in which cases it might actually be useful, and the, that leads us to the second reasons. There is in fact some merit in using the presence of substantial imbalances as an indicator that something might have gone wrong uh, with the process of randomization. Next slide, please. Okay, so 
Uh, quickly, a little bit of a refresher from what was covered in the introductory session about the, the, the general structure of the tool of the signaling questions within the domain. So within each domain, uh, ROB2 includes a set of signaling questions. These are reasonably factual questions about what was done or what happened in the trial, but some of them do require a bit of judgment. The possibly un answers to all the questions are yes, probably yes, probably no, and no information. Note that these questions are phrased in the most natural linguistic way for each issue addressed. This, as a consequence, means that sometimes yes is a good thing and sometimes no is a good thing. Each answer should be supported with quotes or comments to explain why this answer was given. Um, and this is particularly important when the answer reflects a, a bad thing that has happened. So if you have said, um, uh, um, if you've given an answer that sort of is um, um, associated with um, uh, the bad things, then you should um, definitely explain that either with a quote or explanation. Uh, the tool also incorporates algorithms. So um, once you have answered the signaling questions, um, the default risk of bias judgments um, will be suggested by the algorithm. Um, we are working on implementing this uh, in an online uh, format where, uh, where the algorithm will be implemented automatically. However, at the moment, um, you, you would use um, uh, the diagrams for that. Uh, or alternatively, um, uh, there is a, I think there is an Excel tool available that, that does implement algorithms. Um, now, uh, you will get the default judgment, but the user can decide whether to agree with, uh, with the default judgment or, or override it. If you are overriding it, you need to provide an explanation why. Um, but most of the time, we expect that the users will follow the suggestion of the algorithm. The algorithm aims to propose a high risk of bias judgment only if the problems in the domain are such that the result as a whole should be considered to be at high risk of bias. In other words, high risk of bias in any domain is sufficient to determine the overall risk of bias for that result. Again, overall, as a rule, this can be also overridden, but that will be covered in November in my session on overall risk of bias. Okay, this is the domain. So it has three questions. Uh, the first two questions ask directly about the main two processes, generated a truly random sequence and concealing this sequence until participants are irreversibly enrolled into the trial. And those two are familiar. This is similar to what you had in, in, in the, Rob, um, uh, the original ROB tool for those who have used it. Now the third question, did baseline differences between intervention groups suggest a problem with the randomization process? Note the wording of this third question. It is not asking whether there was balance, uh, a baseline imbalance, because there nearly always will be some imbalance due to chance. It is asking whether there was substantial imbalance that provides evidence that the randomization process was problematic. And as I said, many users of the tool, um, well, many users of the old tool have added um, baseline imbalance as an additional domain and misinterpreted it. And in fact, unfortunately, even many users of the tool now misinterpret this question. In most cases, the answer will be no or probably no to this question. It will be rare occasions when you see that there's this, um, there's a, the baseline imbalance is an indicator um, uh, of that something may have gone wrong. Uh, note that in some implementations of the uh, ROB2, um, uh, text formatting is uh, used to indicate which answer reflect good answers and which reflect bad answers or bad features. So here um, we use green underlined text for good features and red text for bad features, not underlined. 
and no information is in normal color is the normal text so black or blue or whatever and move on to next slide please okay so this is my last um, slide uh, uh, I mentioned there's an algorithm that leads you to the question and uh, this is animated um, the slides um, well, I mean the illustration um, of an algorithm uh, for mapping answers to signaling questions onto judgment. The algorithms are not always drawn chronologically going from question one to two to, to three, um, uh, but they are drawn in the most efficient way as possible so the, to, to make the picture that's least complicated with least um, steps and least line. Uh, so it will not exactly map the order in, in of the sequence of the questions, but it will just um, draw it the most efficient way. So here we start with asking whether the allocation sequence was concealed. If it wasn't, then the result will be automatically at high risk of bias. If it was concealed uh, and the sequence uh, was random and there were no substantial imbalances at baseline, then the result will be at low risk of bias. Rarely, Major imbalances at baseline, impl at baseline imply that the randomization was not done properly, despite our impression from reading the methods. Then we would have some concerns, concerns, or possibly worse. So that, if in that case, if you think it's it's worse than than some concerns, that you could use that to override to high risk of bias, for example. We might also have some concerns if the underlying sequence was not random, even if the sequence was concealed. So an example of that might be that they haven't quite used the random method. Maybe they use some sort of alteration and using some record numbers, but it was done by somebody else who was uh, unrelated to a trial. So we think the concealment might have been okay, but um, you might still have concerns that there might have been a way for the investigator to somehow find out what was the basis for the random sequence. Um, and um, quite often, uh, as, as you probably know, we don't have enough information to judge whether there was allocation concealment. Um, um, often, it, there's just nothing about the methods. Uh, and then we would not be able to say low risk of bias. Um, so, um, uh, it would be um, either some concerns of, of um, uh, or uh, if we have problems with the uh, baseline imbalance, then it, we might judge that it's a high risk of bias. That is how the algorithm works.